A brightly coloured iPhone caught my attention as I browsed through eBay a few weeks back. You don't often see custom coloured phones for sale, so I was intrigued by this one's gold appearance. I have made a few custom phones myself, but what would one be like if it was built by someone else? Did they do a decent job? The seller had left an over-the-top description of the phone, suggesting it was a must-have item, a reliable and stylish device. For 50 Australian dollars, I thought I'd find out. It arrived packaged in the oddest packaging. It appears someone was trying to become spiritual with this black cat spirit. I only hope what's inside isn't so strange. Sure enough, it's our phone. Unwrapping it, we can see it's a little bit more damaged than what we could make out from the listing. Actually, it's a lot more damaged. I couldn't see a cracked screen from the photos, or a missing screw, or the fact that it feels really flimsy. Even the SIM tray is broken. How does one do such a thing? Plugging the device in, the phone starts to boot loop. But it's not because there's another major issue, but the fact the battery is so flat it's not being detected. As iPhones attempt to boot when plugged in and cannot run without a battery, it causes a boot loop. Eventually, the battery gets enough charge to display the battery flat icon. But what this proves is this phone was never tested, because it takes a long time to cause a battery to be so flat that it isn't even detected by the phone. But if you thought that was the end of the issues, things are only going to get worse. With the device powered up, we can see the home button doesn't work and the device is locked with a passcode. It's not off to a good start and we haven't even opened the phone yet. Someone has attempted to give this iPhone the look of a gold bar, but have not taken the time to put it in a clear case to prevent it from damage. Not only is it badly scratched like an old iPod, but it has large chips out of the plastic housing revealing the white plastic beneath. It also has an iPhone 5S style of home button, despite only being a 5C and without any fingerprint capabilities. I think it's time to take that one screw out holding it all together and have a look inside this monstrosity. Get a look at that. The goldness continues with a gold fake capacity battery and a few loose screws floating around inside. But that's just the beginning, because the longer you look, the worse it gets. There are two missing screws and what looks like blood on the LCD bracket. One of those screws is actually too long and had it been forcefully tightened, would have killed this phone. The home button doesn't work because one of the interface pins have snapped off, with a poor attempt at gluing it back on, which would have never worked as glue doesn't conduct electricity. Here I found two detached screws and several loose ones. There's another missing screw on the back of the screen, and another sticking out of the earpiece speaker. It's probably also the wrong size. The bracket over the battery and charge port connectors is missing, along with the liquid indicators. Given the amount of rusty looking screws, I bet this phone has been in contact with water at one point. The only thing more phony than the fake gold backing is the high capacity gold battery from Business Batteries. It wasn't even glued in and has a slash in the center. And look, another screw. A few years back, I covered these batteries, so I know what I'm in for. It seems the person who sold this one wasn't smart enough to even put the sticker on the right way. Peeling the sticker off reveals this 2680mAh high capacity battery is really only 1560mAh. I'm no battery scientist, but I know no gold sticker can double your battery capacity. Even worse than the fake battery sticker, is the fake Apple battery beneath it. Its label is crooked and missing the foam on the connector. With the phone open, we can now read the serial number on the logic board. Looking it up, it is indeed a 16GB model. And to top it all off, it's iCloud locked. I reached out to the seller and requested for them to remove the device from their iCloud so I could reset the phone. I made no mention to any of the other issues as I wanted the best chance to have it unlocked before I questioned them any further. I'd received no response after three days, so I filed an eBay case against the seller, explaining all the issues, and received a response within seconds. He mentioned he was going to unlock it straight away, but also was willing to accept the return. Returning the phone would have been the boring option, so let's see if we can fix this disaster ourselves. I'm going to start by removing the display. It will be replaced with a new one as it's damaged. And with the screen out, we can find yet more issues. 
An antenna cable that should link from the top of the logic board to the frame is missing, along with its screws. Also, the phone is missing one of the clips responsible for holding the display in place. Oddly, one of its screws remain. But that's not all. The LED flash bracket has been installed incorrectly. An easy mistake, but critical problem. It has caused the very top of the logic board to bend. How? The bracket clips into a plastic slot. As space is very constricted inside the phone, this small height difference has caused damage. Once the issue is corrected, I'll clean out the dirty camera lens before I reinstall the camera. For the remaining of the missing parts, I will source them from a parts phone. It's amazing that the parts phone actually looks a lot better inside than the gold converted one when we first opened it. We'll salvage the battery and LCD brackets along with the LCD and missing antenna cable. Now it's just the case of installing them onto the phone starting with the antenna cable. Preceding that, the logic board can go back in, replacing one of the screws as it was significantly shorter than an original. To fix the home button, I'll first remove the chewing gum that's holding the cable down before fashioning a replacement pin out of a strand of wire. This makeshift pin can be soldered in place. It may not be as neat as the original, but it's easier and more economical than replacing the whole charging port. Once the excess is removed, the cable can be re-glued to the speaker. But we're not done with the charging port, because every single screw is several turns loose. Speaking of loose parts, it's time I looked for a replacement display clip for my box of spare parts. Once I found the correct one, it's just a simple case of screwing it back in place. Moving over to the display, we can transfer the custom black and gold button to the new replacement, which is a simple ordeal considering there isn't any Touch ID hardware we need to swap with it. Proceeding, the battery can have some proper adhesive applied to it so that it no longer rattles around inside the phone. With that, the display can be attached and the last two remaining brackets installed. Closing up the phone, we can install not one, but two pentalobe screws into the bottom. And we're done. So this is it, a disaster of a custom made iPhone 5C, fixed. But I think the bigger takeaway is some people just shouldn't sell their failed DIY projects on eBay. That's not to say you shouldn't try and repair your own things, just don't be this guy. I mean, how did someone mess this phone up so badly? Unfortunately, these sorts of people always provide a reason to why DIY or third-party repair shouldn't be allowed. There will always be a few incapable people, but why should that prevent the majority of people perfectly capable from doing the job? As for the person who built this phone, I think they should steer clear of trying to repair anything themselves. Not everyone can do everything. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the playlist for tech that's not what it seems. If you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.